I Love Mortgage Brokering, Episode 76. The only podcast for brokers by brokers. I Love Mortgage Brokering will inspire you to up your mortgage business. Join your host, Scott Peckford. Hi, Broke Nation. I am thrilled to introduce our guest today, Chase Cooper. He's been a broker for seven years. He's with DLC. Chase is recently featured in CMP Magazine as one of the industry's young guns. And when I saw him in there, I knew I had to talk, talk to him. I am stoked for this interview today. Chase, you ready to rock? Ready to go, man. Awesome. So can you tell, me, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Well, I'm a mortgage broker, obviously, uh, up in uh, Fort St. John, BC. So a little bit of a smaller town, about 20,000 people or so. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a brother to four sisters, no brothers. Uh, like to play music and like to work hard. What, what kind all of music do you play? Uh, well, I play drums, play guitar. I'm trying to do a little bit of dabbling and singing. Not very well, but uh, something new to, to challenge myself with. You could do some commercials or something uh, for yourself. Yeah I, was, uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe I'll uh, do the next DLC commercial, write a song. Right, write a song, like a, a jingle. So yeah, how did, there you go. How did you get into the mortgage business? Because my experience has been most people when they're little, you know, you talk to a kindergartner, they're not like, when I grow up, I want to be a mortgage broker. You, yeah. Most people kind of end up here. So how did you, what was your path to I brokering? think I might be that one person. I was uh, really motivated to, uh, to become a broker ever since uh, grade five. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, <laughs> really? I I'm to, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I actually, it's a little bit of a long story, but uh, I used to work in the oil patch, obviously up here, that's uh, a big thing, um, big drive for our industry and uh, got a call one day uh, from an old friend and uh, he's a musician in Calgary asked me if I wanted to come place I said sure I sold my house quit my job and moved to Calgary to be an unemployed musician for about a year Mm -hmm. and uh, I had a good friend that was actually a financial advisor and he was talking to me and I was like yeah I gotta I gotta get doing something serious with my life here and uh, he's like well I got an idea for you why don't you become a mortgage broker and Mm -hmm. small town Fort St. John I was like I don't even know what that is what is that you know you you mean a bank like a banker and he's like no no and uh, so he told me a little bit about it. I did my research and I thought it would be kind of interesting to do. And so I uh, interviewed some brokers and took my course and the rest is history. So I I'll, we'll come. I want to come back to your story in a bit. And because uh, obviously you're doing some things right. And But before we do, I want to ask you about a success quote that's really had an impact on your life or business. I love quotes because for me, do you play golf at all? I try. Me too. And in golf, uh, to me, a quote is like a swing thought. So a swing thought is this idea that you're focusing on one. You can't focus on four or five things at a time if you're trying to swing a golf club. And quotes are like that swing thought. So can you share a quote that's been a swing thought for you? And then I want, I'm going to ask you what, how, it's, how you've used it recently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was a big proponent of uh, Jim, Jim Rohn. I love him. Um, and one of his quotes was, uh, uh, work more on yourself than you do on your job. I love that quote. I never really got it until you know I started kind of reading more, more books and stuff like that. And, uh, and once I started more investing more into myself, um, education wise, um, that's when I really actually seen a boom in my business. So, so, okay. That's a, that kind of leads me to, so can you give me an example of something that you invested in that helped your business? So did you, was it a course? Was it a coach? Was it like, what was the, was uh, it you well, listened I mean, to, just, you uh, listened to 73, I love mortgage brokering podcasts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> absolutely. I listened to every single one of those. So, uh, you know, those have been very helpful. Um, a couple of different ways. I mean, I get a, me- I have a mentor, um, and not a professional mentor. I have, you know, friends and mentors, uh, you know, I go out to people that are successful and I ask them and, you know, questions, take them out to lunch you know, do those things, try to pick their brain about what they've done, not just in business, but personally, you know, just to try to get ahead of the game, learn from their mistakes. If I can um, make my own, obviously on the way, Um, going to industry events. um, You know, I flew to Montreal last year. I do all the DLC events, the universities. I do it every year. Um, A lot of people say, well, that's just for new, new people, but it's not just the the events that you go to. It's the networking, the people that you talk to at these events, Um, you know, books. um, I like to read books and uh, just, just that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that if you're not uh, if you're not looking to grow personally, you're just gonna you're just gonna stay stagnant. So right, right. You can be you can be in the industry for 20 years and have one year experience that you just keep repeating over and over again and not actually be better at your job or at you know helping clients. Yeah, exactly. So I've also noticed talking to successful mortgage brokers, business owners that failure happens. It's uh, not fatal, but looking back, there's always a lesson. So can you share something that you failed at, but looking back, there was a lesson in it for you? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's actually part of a, another quote that I really like is a uh, failure is a gateway to success. Um, I was always, uh, I'll admit, I was always, you know, afraid of failure, but, um, through that, you know, better things have happened. So one of the things would be actually that music venture that I tried, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it big. And, you know, I went and I took risk and a lot of scrutiny from, uh, you know, from my employer, my other employee, people that I work with, my family, they, you know, they're just like, you're making a huge mistake. I went and did it anyways, and it didn't work out, but it actually segued me into, uh, into 
what I do now, which is, you know, I love what I do. And I, if I would never would have made that move and, and failed at that, I never would have been where I am today um, doing what I do. Another one is, you know, when I started, I, I tried to get all the big hitters with realtors and uh, I got rejected by every single one of them. Mm-hmm. And I just kept at going. At least you went and asked them though. So I, I, I went and asked and I kept going and kept going and kept going. And then, uh, you know, I just, just kind of kept plugging away. And then eventually they, they were coming back to me because, you know, I do, I do, you know, mutual clients and, and they would kind of see what I was all about. And, but, you know, I just gave them information. I never asked for business after that, but I would send emails out to them. And, and eventually they started kind of flocking back to me. I mean, this is like three or four years later, but you know, it took a little while, but I never, never gave up talking to people and trying to, uh, trying to land a couple big referrals. So, right. So a quick question for you, this is sort of a side question, but how often do you stay in touch with your realtors now? Like the, say the realtors that you work with? Um, so the realtors that I work with, uh, you know, I talk to them probably a couple times a week. Uh, I, I, you know, I take them out for, you know, dinner, I take them out for lunch. Uh, I hang out with them outside of work. So they're actually, they become my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not really like a lot of business stuff. It's just, you know, we like each other. And I've always said, you know, if you can make friends with somebody, they'll always do business with you. Right. Um, so that- yeah, that, I mean, every other realtor, like I put every single realtor in town, I, I got an email list. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when there's, um, you know, breaking news in the mortgage industry or anything like that, I, I send them emails every week, um, letting them know what's going on. And I, I, I never ask for a referral. I just try to give them information and, uh, you know, sometimes they call me and sometimes they don't. So, right. But you just stay there in, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. So, Another thing I've noticed talking to successful brokers is they have systems and processes. They don't just show up and hope for the best and they're always willing to tweak them or adjust them to get better results. So can you share an example of an administrative process that maybe wasn't working as well as you'd like and then an adjustment you made in the outcome you got? Yeah, um, I think a, a I don't know if I wanted to call it a mistake, but one thing I do, like a small town, everybody wants to meet face to face. And so right. I would basically set up the call with the client and uh, tell them, okay, come in. They would come in and then I take their application and they just wouldn't be ready, wouldn't have paperwork. They wouldn't, you know, and then I get the application. They would just wouldn't be ready to to get approved for mortgage. So um, one thing I've done is I, you know, kind of pre-screen them um, beforehand. And then what I do is I send them to my online application to so I can get their information up front mm-hmm. just to, and I let them know like, you know, this is just save time during the meeting. So I don't have to take down your information during our meeting. Mm-hmm. But then too, I, I work on the file. And then if I know there's certain things that we're going to need, um, or if there's going to be, you know, different types of paperwork that I need, um, I, I can get them to bring that in, you know, before they actually come. So um, upfront paperwork and then uh, pre-filling out online applications is uh save me a lot of time and energy. Oh, totally. Otherwise you meet them. You're like, great. Thanks for all this. Now I've got to go back and, and you know, or they got, they go back and they have homework. It's totally the way to go. I agree with you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And then on the sales side, same thing. There's uh, successful brokers have sales processes and they're also willing to adjust those sales or marketing. They're willing to adjust them to get better outcomes. Can you share an example of a sales or marketing uh, and process you had and an adjustment that you made? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, I'd say 2012, 2013, I did pretty much consistently the same volume. And, you know, I, I was okay with that, but I, I look back at it and I'm like, what is, you know, what is an issue that I'm having? And, and one of the things was, is, as we all find this, is rate shoppers. Mm-hmm. You know, how can we, how can we get past them asking about the rate? Um, you know, we, we know there's differences and all that sort of stuff, but getting the client to believe in it. So what I did was I, I took, you know, a couple months to really refine my upfront sales process when I'm talking to the client. Um, you know, the flow of the meeting, I really, really worked on that. So the, the meeting flowed really well, but also too, I gave the clients, you know, really valuable information and went over diagrams of uh, the differences between, you know, a, you know, a big bank rate and, a, you know, a monoline lender rate and, you know, how their penalties could be different mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. And then after, you know, after I had that refined, I'd actually tell clients like that had meetings with the banks and say, go back to them and, uh, you know, see what they say. And they always come back now and rates not an issue because they know that, you know, not every rate is, is considered equal. Right. So I go over that and I, I, illustrate it for them. And uh, that was one thing that, uh, you know, that boomed my business last year. So I never, I never really lost clients to rate. And uh, so on that, uh, did is that something you developed yourself or did you take some outside stuff to sort of come up with that whole, the scripting on that? Um, the scripting on it, I just, yeah, I just worked on it. I mean, it was, it was tweak here and there. I mean, the, the beginning stages was pretty, you know, pretty raw, pretty jagged, salesy, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I just kept going with it and kept working on it with each client and, and by myself too. You know, I'd, I'd say, well, 
you know, how should I structure it this way? You know, what works better? Um, when I'm doing the illustration for the clients, I actually get the clients to do the calculating uh, because it engages them a little bit more and, and then they can see and do it for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one thing that, uh, yeah, I just kind of implemented that myself. And, you know, I've shared that with my other brokers um, on our team as well and let them know that that was something I was having a lot of success with. So Right. No, that's awesome. I think it's important to have a, a process, man. You can't just like, you know, kind of wing it every time you meet somebody. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of, you know, how I was before that. Um, not not a, not completely winging it, but there was definitely not that type of structure. So that was a that was a big thing that I realized that I could change, and and it uh, it made a big impact on my business. Right. I've also uh, I've no, I've been hearing a recurring theme for the need to diversify your income. So there's been kind of two camps that in my mind that have formed. One says yes, you need to diversify your income. You know, have other products and services you offer. Another one says no, just be stick stick to mortgage brokering. I just wanted to know which area you fell in or which camp. I. I guess the cross-selling aspect of things, um, you know, there definitely could be a benefit for that. I mean, you're protecting your client, whether it's through, you know, MPP or, you know, if you're a CFF, you know, franchise owner and you're offering, you know, lines of credits or, you know, bank accounts or anything like that. Um, I think where the strength of that is, is, is having a mindset as, as an entrepreneur, not just a mortgage broker doing a deal by deal by deal um, thing. You got to look forward in the future, five years down the road, where do you want your business to look like? Uh, for me, you know, I, I enjoy, I like trailer fees. Um, they pay a little bit less up front, but uh, if the client fits with them and it works, um, I'm all for that because that's going to give me the residual income. Mm-hmm. Um, also too, you know, I just, you know, commercial real estate, you know, the building that I'm in, you know, just bought that recently. So that's going to be, you know, kind of my investment down the road. So I think it's, it's more about the mindset um, versus what you're actually doing. You know, you might not have to be cross selling, but you know, just having that entrepreneurial mindset is, is, uh, is the biggest thing I think. Right. No, that's true. That's very good. And uh, I'm going to move to the rapid fire questions. So these, you can answer a little shorter answers if you like. So what's the number one thing holding back most mortgage brokers from being successful? I would say work ethic. And what one habit or things made you successful? Consistency. Do you have an internet resource or software program used to make your business more successful? Uh, yeah, I use uh, I use Auto, Dropbox, Evernote, um, kind of those those sort of things. Right. And if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. So, what's one thing? And this is a side question. So, what's one thing from the book that you've found that you've applied to your business? The small things add up to the big things. Um, doing something consistent and small every day, it'll eventually grow into something you know large down the road. You know. 12 months down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road. Um, but just doing the consistent things every day in and out, um, will get you there. Right. Give me an example of something that, uh, that you, was a small, a small thing that you've been sort of changing. Um, excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, I can, uh, well, for me, it's, uh, it's showing up every day, um, making calls every day. Um, I don't make like 10 or 12 calls or, you know, I might make one call a day to, you know, to a realtor being consistent like that, um, with my emails to my realtors. Um, it just takes time. Uh, you know, I got the, I think he was number one realtor in, uh, BC. Um, he started to send me business now because, because I've consistently done this and he was the one that rejected me. And this was five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is just coming to fruition, but I just do that every day, you know, not every day. I do that every week, but, you know, I do a call every day, show up every day uh, before eight o'clock. Uh, I just try to be consistent with, with what I do. And is a large percentage of your business from realtors? Um, I would say, I would say probably 20%. Um, I have a, a lot of it now is, is just existing clients um, because of the consistency of, uh, every, you know, every client, if it's a family member, cousin, you know, somebody I don't know, they get the same experience every file. So they know that, you know, when they refer somebody, they're going to get the same experience. So. Right. That's important too. Yeah. So uh, where do you think our industry is headed? Where's the opportunity? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, with tougher, tougher regulations and everything like that, that potentially coming down, everything's getting tighter. I think the opportunity is going to be an all day business, um, you know, kind of branching out, um, doing stuff that the banks can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's, there's going to be more of a niche there. So, um, for people to kind of look into that and, and become familiar and accustomed to that, um, I think that's, that's going to be a good niche to be in. Right. Yeah. I've heard that a lot actually too. Uh, so here's the last question. It's one of my favorites. Remember the movie back to the future? Love it. So the movie Back to the Future, they got this car, you jump in it, you can travel in time. So if I could put you in the DeLorean, send you back just seven years to when you started and you could sit down, you know, right across from yourself and you'd say, you know, Chase, here's three things you need to do to have a better business today. What three things would you tell yourself? I actually know exactly what that would be. Um, I tell myself to show up, uh, be consistent and have integrity. Um, Those are things that I tell agents um, you know, that are new coming onto our team. Do you want me to delve into those a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a little, give me some, some on those 
So okay, show up. Um, what do you mean by show up? So by showing up is is you know being prepared. So you know if you have a meeting with a realtor, um, you know or a referral source, don't just show up and wing it. You know be prepared. Find out about them. Um, you know have you know have some criteria that you're going to go through, or at least a few points that you want to hit during the conversation. Um, when you're talking to them, be there, be engaged. Uh-huh. Um, don't be on your phone. Don't be late. Always be early. Um, just certain things like that. I think uh, makes a huge difference. Right. Um, the consistency is is the same thing. Um, with your files, be consistent on how you do it, how you run your, you know, your systems from starting a file or, you know, taking a phone call, starting a file, opening up a file, taking an application, you know, getting through the approval process, your closings, you know, what do you do after your closings? Like when the client gets the house, like do everything the same, be consistent, Uh Um, same thing, show up every day. Um, You know, I tell, I tell, you know, agents, you can't do it part-time. I show up, you know, seven o'clock in the morning every day, um, just to get get things done, and I mean, you know, I've been in the business a little while, and uh, you know, I do have a, a good clientele, but I still do the same things I did on day one. So, mm-hmm. and then have integrity. Um, one thing I tell people is uh, the day you do a deal for a dollar is the day you should quit. Right. Um, because once you do that, then obviously you're, you know, you're doing it for the wrong reasons and it's, it's not a benefit to you and it's not definitely not a benefit for your client. Um, so the integrity part was a, another big thing. Right. Dustin Woodhouse says, win the client, not the deal. And I love that. It's just yeah. kinda, the idea no, that you're, great. you're about winning the, the person over. And sometimes that means, you know, not doing the deal or sending them somewhere else or whatever. Yeah. So. I mean, that's uh, yeah. My first year I did, uh, I think I made $25,000 my first year and, uh, I probably turned away. I would say twenty thousand dollars of the business just because it didn't make sense for them to mm-hmm. use me. Those people actually became huge referral sources for me, and uh, so it's just you know do that one th- small thing, but it, uh, you know down the road it's probably made me you know one hundred fifty grand. You know, and those and that's hard deals. in your first year to do that, right? Like oh, if you're new, that's... you're like turning away stuff that you want to get a, take a shot at because maybe it'll be a deal for you. But Ab- absolutely, especially when you uh, just bought a house and had a kid, <laughs> right? Awesome. Okay. Well, Chase, I really appreciate your time today, man. Where can people find you online? ChaseCooper.ca. And are you hiring at all? I think I might be hiring probably in the next six months or so. We'll see how things go um, with the market and stuff. Cool. And if anybody's listening to this, they can check out the show notes. There'll be links to Chase and his website. Man, I really appreciate your time today and I hope you continue to crush it. Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on the show. The only podcast for brokers by brokers. I Love Mortgage Brokering will inspire you to up your mortgage business. Join your host, Scott Peckford. Hey, Broker Nation, Scott Peckford here. Have you joined our VIP club for mortgage brokers yet? If not, you're missing out. We share exclusive content not available on the web or the show. We share scripts, step-by-step guides, and other insider tips to help you save time and make you more money. I can't tell you how many times after I turn off the recorder, a guest starts sharing some awesome advice or a script or, or a tip, and I take the best of this and share it with my VIPs. If you want to get on the list, visit ilovemortgagebrokering.com slash VIP. That's ilovemortgagebrokering.com slash VIP. Oh, and one other thing. Since this is exclusively for mortgage brokers, there is a skill testing question. Good luck, and I hope you continue to rock your mortgage biz.